Hello. Welcome to church. We're glad to have you worship with us. Welcome to our annual Teens Week celebration. Our theme for this year is the Authentines. Sit tight, fasten your seatbelts, and enjoy the ride as we take you on an authentic journey to originality. Good morning, church. Good How morning. are we all doing? I hope our teenagers have injured you all. Lest I forget, welcome online, church. Hi, we love you all. I just want to take this time to appreciate teachers for giving me the opportunity to be here because honestly, I cannot be here and I honestly wonder how I'm even actually standing here. I'm, I'm not freaking out. Okay, let's close our eyes for a short prayer. I thank God for this morning. I thank God for bringing us here. I thank God that we are here and we, have become, we came here to worship with us. I ask God that we give you the understanding to be able to understand my message. Again. Amen. Okay, so my topic for today is the. My topic for today, my topic for today is the authentic teens as light in a dark world. Basically, the authentic teenagers as in a, as light in a dark world. But before I start, let's read First Peter two nine. Media, could you help us? Could you help me with that? I mean. <laughs> Okay, in the NLT translation, thank you. Okay, so it says, but you are not like that, for you are a chosen people, you are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. Hmm. Can you say to your neighbor that you are God's very own possession? Okay, so as authentic teenagers, we are God's very own possession. We need to understand that he's our father, he cares for us. Um, well, he carries our matter on our head like every single day, like... I wonder how he's so loving, like he loves us all our excesses, our flaws. Like we do some things and I still wonder how he just welcomes us back as his children, his sons and daughters. So let's continue. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. As authentic teenagers, we've been called out of darkness into his marvelous and wonderful light. But let's not just keep this light onto ourselves. Let's show it onto others. Because he has shown it to us first, as scripture says. But let's, let's show it onto others so he, others can be impacted. But how do we show this light onto others? Let's read Philippians 2, verse 14 to 16. Media. In the NLT translation. Okay, so the first part says, do everything without complaining and arguing. Hmm. Teenagers, oh, we can complain, no. I don't, I don't understand what is going on. Like, we just, we just do things, and I wonder how. Like, cause, okay, let's bring it, let's bring it back to church. So nowadays, we are in church. Oh, on Kamana, we'll probably be wondering, okay, who is going to take message? Who is going to do this? You come and meet teenager. Teenager is like, I cannot do it. I'm too shy. I'm too shy. Why shall I shy shy? But you shall, you shall understand. And scripture says, as authentic teenagers, we have to do everything without complaints and arguing. And if we're complaining and arguing onto like, our teachers and all, we're not showing others that, yes, we have light, we have an authentic purpose. We're not showing others that, people that are looking up to us, that, yes, we actually have light. It's just like lighting a candle and then putting... first obey what has been asked of us before we start complaining, before we start putting up this attitude towards our teachers and parents. First 15, please, of Philippians 2 verses. Okay, so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. So, no, still on verse 15, thank you. It says live clean, innocent life. That's my second point. Yes, it might not be easy, like, at all. Because how do you want us to live clean, innocent lives? There's no how. Because I feel like Adam and Eve already disrupted the whole thing. Because when they sinned, they already, like, brought sin onto us. So I can't blame, can't blame ourselves, actually. But the Bible already says here that live clean, innocent lives are children of God. So we have to live clean, innocent lives. Yes, it might not be easy. Because how do you want us to live clean, innocent lives? But as God, as the center of everything, you can actually live clean, innocent lives. Teenagers, let's do things that our parents and teachers won't start questioning. Are we responsible enough to be doing or holding these kind of things? Okay, let's, let's make it more practical. Okay, so mobile phones. 
at one point in life, our parents or guardians or uncles and aunties are going to be like, okay, my child needs a phone. She needs to be able to uh, communicate with the world and everything. But let's not do things that our parents now start wondering, okay, did I make a right decision giving my child this phone and all? Like, don't let social media be the only thing that wakes you up, makes you energetic and all. Let God be the center of this thing. As authentic teenagers, we have to understand that, yes, we, we've been called for a purpose, but we need to understand, actually understand that purpose. And we can't understand that purpose without God. Because God was already the authentic maker. And he gave each one of us an authentic purpose. But we need to actually discover that purpose. Verse 16. It says, hold firmly to the word of life. This is actually where we have to understand how we're going to be able to show light onto others. It says, hold firmly to the word of life. By holding, the word of life is the Bible, which has basically all the instructions God has given unto us. Each instruction comes with a different, like, purpose or something like that. But we need to understand that we need to read, meditate, and study the word because the word is where everything actually flows from, where each purpose has been given or instruction has been given unto us. And by reading his word and studying it, we are showing, if that's what wells our light, actually. That's what shows everybody that, yes, we actually have light. It, it says Matthew 5, Matthew 5, 16, that where, um, shine your light before men that he may see your good works. Let's show others that we actually have light. Teenagers, let's understand that we are God's, we are God's very own possession, that he doesn't joke with us. He actually cares for us, each and every single one of us. Yes, you might not actually know what our purpose is on, in life yet, but pray to God and he will make us understand what that purpose is. Okay, so I've finished saying my topic to the teenagers, actually, but this part actually speaks to the parents because I don't want it to be like, okay, it's Teenage Sunday, I'm only talking to teenagers, so let's, let's talk to the parents too. I just want to take this time out to thank the parents, teachers, guardians, uncles, and aunties sitting here with me. Like, honestly, you guys are doing an, an awesome job. Like, I wonder how you guys still just, you know, you just welcome us back with all our flaws, with all our arguments and every, all our complaints and everything. Like, people are actually, give it up for the parents in the house, guys. People are doing an awesome job. But I just want to say that I just want to say something before I, I leave here. Um, can we open our Bibles to Colossians three verse twenty one in Amplified Classic translation? Okay, so I don't want to be mean, but I will try my best not to be mean. <laughs> it says fathers, and, and I'm not just talking to the fathers in the house, as people are the head of the family, I'm talking to everybody. It says fathers, do not provoke or irritate or fret your children. Do not be hard on them or harass them, lest they become discouraged and sullen and morose there and feel inferior and frustrated. Do not break their spirits. In TPT, it says that um, parents do not have unrealistic expectations for your children. <laughs> It says, parents, do not have unrealistic expectations for your children unless they will become discouraged. Parents, I want to plead with you. Please don't have unnecessary expectations for us. Each one of us by, was given a different and unique purpose by God, and we are not the same. Don't compare us to our siblings, either younger or elder. Don't compare us to your colleagues' friends, your neighbor's friends, all those people that you feel that, yes, my child is not doing this. She needs to be better. Don't make us feel like we're not worth it or something like that. <laughs> Shall I get my point? Don't force us into a course, a profession, or a dream you had when you were younger. Don't make us try to fulfill your childhood dreams. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not you? Not like I'm saying that people are not doing. Like I mean that. Why not you? Each one of us has unique purpose. Okay, let me break this person up. Okay, so there was a point where I was in GS3 and I was confused. <laughs> I was trying to decide whether to go to art, science, commercial, that whole decision thingy. And my grandma always wanted a science student. Like almost, she has been wanting doctor in the house since. But you know, I did not fulfill the thingy. I did not. I did not do science, so I said, no, no problem. I prayed to God, and I felt like the Holy Spirit told me, okay, Maria, art is where you actually belong. Okay, so I told my parents. So my parents did not say anything. They just said, Maria, okay, are you sure this is the decision you want? And then I was, not, I was not trying to, you know, think it through again. And then I said, yes, this is where I want to be. And here I am. I'm standing here. I'm topping my class. I'm doing everything according to God's will. Like, ah, 
like I'm, I'm, I'm honestly grateful for my parents because like they're not the kind of parents who compare you to other children. They're just like, okay, Marie, as long as this is what you want, they will take it and they will welcome you in. Parents, I plead, I plead with you. Sure, I should go on my knees. Like I should beg. I don't, don't have unnecessary expectations for us because we're not the same. Each one of us has a unique purpose given by God, and He's the authentic maker. He's the authentic maker. I mean, so He, he has already given us a purpose, and we are already here to fill that purpose. But instead, pray for us and with us, and then also encourage us to pray for ourselves that we have a purpose and we are going to discover and accomplish that God-given purpose. Always encourage us that we are authentic, we are unique, we are who God says we are. Encourage us that each one of us has a different ability given by God. Encourage us that, yes, this is my child, though, but also guide us in that path. Don't just leave it to us because we cannot, we cannot handle it. We don't, we don't have the ability to handle it by ourselves. You people are supposed to be the ones that are supposed to guide us into it. You know, there's this song that says, okay, um, choir, I'll show you help me. <laughs> I know who God says I am, what it says I am, where it says I'm at. I know who I am. I know who God Say to yourselves, you know who God says you are. Where he says I am. Where he says I'm mad. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. Cause I know who okay, Let's get up on our feet, guys. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles, I live a life of favor, cause I know who I am. Everybody sing, oh, 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 cause I know who I am. So there's this part of the song where it says, take a look at me, I'm a wonder. Hey, it doesn't matter what you see now. Hey, see it's going. Cause talk to your neighbor and say, take a look at me, I'm a wonder. Hey, it doesn't matter what you see now. Hey, see it's going. Cause I know. So my, my summary of what this whole topic was about is that we are authentic. And to be authentic is to be real, to be unique, to be you, to be who God says you are, to be light in the darkness, and to fulfill God's purpose in our lives. Can we bow our heads? Okay, so I have this prayer that's, that's for both the teenagers and the parents. It says, let's pray. Um, help us. Um, Help us to align with your will, O oh God, as teenagers and parents. Help us to understand that we are authentic and that you have given us a purpose. Help the parents to guide us into that path and to help us discover our God-given purpose. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, guys. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching this video, we do appreciate you. If you are yet to subscribe to this channel, kindly do so by clicking the subscribe button so that you get updated whenever we post more edifying content on this channel. Once again, we appreciate you, thank you and God bless you.